Switches can be used in scrap mechanic survival for many things. This video I'm going to show you how we are using a switch to power our creations, automate resource collecting, and save both gas and batteries. If you do end up finding this video helpful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing for more videos like this. Also I do stream over on Twitch, link in the description below. Let's get started. So really quickly we're going to head over here to our craft bot and as you can see the switch is on the fourth row down, second from the left. And what the switch does is it says unlimited toggling on demand, the switch activates whatever it's connected to, making it indispensable when you want to turn things on and off with a single push. It can activate on engine, a thruster, the controller, and more. It costs one scrap metal and two circuit boards. Now we have a bunch of switches set up currently around our farm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you on a tour and show you how we're using the switch currently. So right here we have a chest and it has some water in it and it's connected to this crafting system. So all these chests and the craft bots above are all connected via these tubes. And what we're doing is we have a water pump down here that goes into this water container and it goes up into the here and fills this chest up. And it's connected to a switch. So really quickly, just to show you how the switch works, all you do is connect the switch down here to the pump, make sure the arrow is green and pointing in to collect the water. And we're just gonna hit the switch here. So as you can see, it shows there's 17 right here. We're gonna hit this. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna start filling up pretty quickly actually. So that's how we collect water for making concrete and metal. So we're going to turn that off because one thing you want to definitely not do is leave that on because if you end up leaving it on, you'll end up filling all your chests with water. So make sure if you have it set up like that, you turn that off when you're done collecting the water. Over here, we have our scouting vehicle. And this scouting vehicle is what I use to drive around and just loot the area. You may have seen in some other videos. And what I have on this car is I have one switch. So the switch right here is just connected to the seat and to the two headlights. And the reason it's connected to the two headlights or to, is, and to the seat is so that when I'm driving, if it gets dark out, I can just press one. As you can see on the, uh, the hop, hop bar down there, one is the switch and it turns on the headlights, so it turns them on and off. So that's really helpful at nighttime or if you're going through a dense wooded area to see where you're going. So here we have our tree cutter, and on the tree cutter I also have one switch. And what this switch does is it turns on the saw. And the reason I have it set up that way is because I don't want the saw running all the time. I only want it running when I'm actually cutting wood. So if I'm just driving around, I don't want the saw using energy. And in this case, I have it hooked up to an electric engine because the electric engine is really good for powering a saw. So the way this is set up is we have the switch is hooked up to the seat and it's hooked up to the engine. And what it does is while I'm driving, I can turn the engine on, which then powers the saw. So as you can see, if I'm in here, I press the one key and there is the saw, it's working. And we can turn it off. So once again, that saves a ton of energy as we're driving around. And over here, here's another vehicle I have. Also showed this in some previous videos. This one's a little more complicated. It has five switches. One of the switches powers the headlights. Three of them power the pistons and one of them powers the drill. And it's a pretty similar setup. It's gonna look a little more complicated. So number one is for the headlights. It's connected to the headlights and to the seat so I can control it from the seat. Two, three, and four are connected to these three pistons that control the drilling apparatus. And that's those are all connected to the seat as well. And then the fifth one is used for the drill. And in this case, it's set up the same way as the saw. So it's connected to the seat and to the, to the electric engine that I have over here. So it's number five. It's connected to the seat and then to the electric engine, just like the, the saw was back there. So really quickly, we'll hop in here. And as you can see, number one turns on the headlights, same as the previous vehicle. Number two controls the first piston, which raises up the drilling apparatus. Number three extends it out. Number four lowers it, and then number five turns on the drill. And then we just press them again, press five to turn the drill off, four, three, and two to lower it back down, and we're good to go. We're gonna quickly go over here because we're gonna get hit with a raid in one minute, and I wanted to show you what's going on over by the farm. So this is a little more complicated. This is a switch that controls our gate, and this one actually is connected to a logic gate because what we wanted was the switch on both sides to end up being able to open the gate from both sides. So really quickly, I'll show you the logic gate if we can see it. So it's set up to X or, which means it allows, it allows both this switch and the switch over here to open and close the gate. And real quick, let's run over to our farm and show you the stuff we have over there because we do have the switch set up to help with our trap. So we're gonna head over there, hopefully get over there within the next 20 seconds before the mobs spawn. And we also have a couple other things over here. We have a watering system that I'm also going to show you after we're finished with the raid. And yeah, our base is coming along pretty nicely so far. So the raid is actually, is that coming already? A little bit early? We have our blueberries here. We're not going to worry about collecting them yet. So the raid's here. So what we have here is we have our trap set up. 
once again this is built out of this is built out of metal three you only need to build out a concrete two or concrete or metal two right now i built it out of metal three just because the way i looked at like like the way it looked but as you can see the robots are not getting through so we're just going to smash them with our trap real quick and there's a couple that are stuck over there so we're going to move over here hopefully they'll come over this way they may or may not sometimes they get stuck and if they get stuck you can just hit them so he can't hit me he's not gonna be able to attack the wall because that wall's made out of concrete too that guy over there by the beach we'll take care of him in just a minute so really quickly this thing goes up and down and it's really simple the way it's connected is it's the same as the pistons over on the other on the drill basically the pistons are connected to the switch so there's four pistons they're all set to the same settings so that they all go down evenly and it just goes up and down and crushes the robots. So easily taking care of them. It's not even necessary because we can take care of all the robots anyway by the way this is set up. As I said before, they can't like break blocks that are durability six or higher. And before we collect all these, because that's kind of not really relevant right here, we're gonna show you the watering system. So this switch is set up to control two pistons over here. And what these do is they push the watering system out. The watering system has a sensor on it and it hits these bars over here. As it passes these bars, it sprays water. And this just lets us water all of our plants really easily. And then we can press to make it come back. And then this system's completed over here by this watering system. So you're going to notice this is the same thing as over there, except it's got five water pumps that are constantly sucking in. And the reason this is always turned on is because it's these are connected directly to the water pumps. The water containers here are connected directly to the pumps. So it's there's no harm in ever having them completely filled. So this switch connects directly over here to each one of these water pumps and we just leave them turned on at all times so anyway, yeah those are a few ways we're using the switch and scrap mechanic survival there are many other ways to use a switch and if you have any you would like to share please do so in the comments below if you found this video helpful please click the like button and consider subscribing for more videos like this also i do stream over on twitch link in the description below thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video